In this video, we are going to learn how to treat a pre-equilibrium situation. Okay, so uh, suppose that you have a reaction A plus B to give C, and then C generates uh, a product. Okay, uh, so this is a, a situation of a consecutive reaction in which, in this case, you have two reagents. They generate an intermediate, and then that intermediate, in a separate step, uh, reacts to uh, get the products. Okay, so we're going to call these red constants k sub 2, this one is k sub 1. Something interesting that happens in this situation, which is uh, relatively new, is that uh, this intermediate uh, has two possibilities. It can either react to generate products, or it can back react to go back to reagents, and that reaction is going to be controlled by a rate constant k minus 1. Alright, so uh, obviously when you add these two reactions up, the overall reaction would be A plus B to give products. But again, the mechanism is more complicated because you have one intermediate. And uh, again, the question would be, well, how do we uh, analyze the rate law of this reaction? Well, we're going to uh, run two, scenario, two scenarios. The first one is uh, uh, by compression of the rate constant, we can determine that the first step uh, is actually fast. Uh, sorry, that would be a slow. The first uh, scenario is that this is slow, and this one is fast. Okay, so let's write that down. This one would be the slow one. Well, because the slow step determines the rate, then the rate, the overall reaction in that case, will be simply rate is equal to case 1 uh, times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. All right, and again, that would be the overall rate. We don't have to worry about the second step or the reversal step as long as um, uh, that's a slow step, then this, the, the rate will be determined simply by uh, that expression. Okay, so so far nothing new. Now the novelty of this, uh, what we're trying to explain, comes when we try to analyze here what happens under the second scenario, which is when the second uh, step is the slow one. All right. Under that, those circumstances, what happens here is that K2 multiplied by the concentration of the intermediate C this will be our rate law. But the problem is that we c this cannot be our final rate law because that depends on the concentration of, inter of an intermediate. And intermediates cannot appear in rate laws. Okay, so we have to look for something to be able to uh, replace this for uh, variables that depend on the concentration of reagents, uh, perhaps products, and so forth. Okay, so uh, all right, uh, let's examine what happens here. If we actually look at the first step there, uh, we see that if this is slow, then that takes, pretty fa takes place pretty fast, right? And notice that this is actually a situation of an equilibrium, okay? So we actually have learned how to treat these equilibrium situations. We know that for those cases, the equilibrium constant, which we have defined as the concentration of C at equilibrium over the standard uh, molar concentration uh, over the concentration of reagents at equilibrium, which will also be divided by the reference concentrations, okay, we have analyzed that uh, from a kinetics perspective, this is the same thing as having the ratio of the forward over the reverse rate, consta rate constants. Okay, that's something that we have learned in a few videos uh, ago. Right, so this is perfect because now we have a, a situation where we can actually solve for the concentration of C as a function of the concentration of, rea of reagents right away. Okay, notice that we could do a uh, concentration of C, which is what we want to solve for uh, to get a complete rate law, would be equal to uh, the equilibrium constant K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B, or using the rate constants, this will be equal to K sub 1, K minus 1, concentration of A, concentration of B. Okay. Uh, all right, so we take this expression for uh, the concentration of the intermediate, come back to the uh, uh, rate law, and we will find that the overall rate law for the reaction will be K2 multiplied by K1 divided over K minus 1, and then concentration of A times the concentration of B. Okay? Notice that there's a slight difference between uh, the rate laws for when the second step is slow, which is this one, and when the first step is the slow one, which will be simply K1 concentration of A concentration of B. So that is the fact of uh, having a pre-equilibrium. Uh, historically, this pre-equilibrium concept uh, is very important because Michaelis and Menten, when they were working through uh, the mechanism of enzyme uh, catalyzed reactions, 
they were actually assuming that uh, the pre-equilibrium takes place. But so now if you think about an enzyme reaction with a substrate to generate an enzyme substrate complex, and then that enzyme substrate complex uh, reacting to generate products, Okay, they did assume that uh, this second step uh, was the slow one, okay, clearly so, uh, and that means that you actually have an e a pre-equilibrium between the en enzyme substrate and the enzyme substrate complex. Well, under those circumstances, now we actually know how to treat the kinetics and obtain the rate law for the overall reaction.